What's up everyone, Taiki here, and today I wanna to share my bull case for Matic. So if you like the content, please like and subscribe and check out the premium research, link will be in the description below, so let's get right into it. So before I talk about all the catalysts Matic has in the coming weeks and months, I do wanna take a walk down memory lane because, uh, you know, a little bit over, let's say, three years ago, or a little bit under three years ago, um, I started talking about Matic on my YouTube channel. Um, and I think a lot of people um, that I've met in real life and also online mentioned that uh, my Polygon videos was what got people into DeFi. Um, and this was when DeFi and yield farming wasn't really a thing. Um, and then Polygon launched their incentives program, and then it was literally free money falling from the sky uh, you know, across the board. Uh, so it, it is kind of weird to talk about Matic on a more fundamental basis instead of talking about, you know, shark swap or any of these like random ponzi's that you know people were putting money in um, but you know times are changing um back then people didn't really know what they were doing now people have a better idea of what they're doing uh so you know all these types of uh you know random farms don't really work anymore um but it definitely seems like the meta has shifted to infrastructure airdrops um and that's kind of want to shift um the attention on so from a fundamental basis, um, Polygon is going to do a rebrand of their token from Matic to POL. I'll talk about the functionality of the POL token later uh, in the video, um, and that's where the bull case lies. Uh, but before I get into that, I do need to go over the problems within uh, the L2 landscape right now um, and how Matic is aiming to fix those issues. So, you know, even Bankless did this two hour interview with Justin Drake around the issue around fragmentation. And if you think about Ethereum L2s, they're all siloed from one another, where each individual L2, such as Arbitrum Optimism, um, they are settling on ETH, um, this individual bridge contract, and it makes bridging very, very difficult. Um, of course, you can bridge from, let's say, Arbitrum to Optimism through Stargate and other uh, snaps and other bridges like that. Um, but if you do want to, you know, bridge native assets. You have to, you know, bridge Arbitrum, sorry, ETH from Arbitrum to ETH, wait seven days, and then bridge that ETH to Optimism. Um, and yes, fees work, but uh, the fees are pretty expensive. Uh, it does take time. Um, and from a user experience point of view, it's not perfect. Um, a lot of people talk about account abstraction and saying, you know, oh, like, you know, one wallet does it all. And then, you know, you don't have to worry about using all these chains because uh, it'll be obfuscated from the user standpoint. Uh, but unfortunately, we're not at that point yet. Um, and this is an inherent problem because all these L2s share ETH as a summon layer and ETH is very slow and expensive. It does like 12 transactions per second and posting data to ETH, um, settling on ETH is very um, expensive. Um, bridges work, but they are too expensive and slow. And as a result, cross-chain apps are not feasible. Um, ideally, Arbitrum applications like GMX um, can share liquidity with, like, um, I guess, other L2s like Optimism, Blast, Manta, etc. However, right now that's not feasible. And you can argue that if this like layer two composability existed and all applications could share liquidity with one another, uh, applications like GMX could have more value. Um, but because of the siloed liquidity problem, um, the app layer, at least on the execution layer, such as Arbitrum um, and other L2s, um, you know, it's really hard to find any app on these L2s that are worth anything. Um, best case, they're worth like half a billion dollars, but that's probably like the peak that they can reach. Um, and any solution that can fix this uh, fragmentation issue uh, can potentially, first of all, I mean, derive more value to the app layer because the fat protocol thesis says that all the value accrues on the uh, i guess like the infrastructure layer um but maybe um if these apps are composable um the value flows back up top in the app layer um so you know before i talk about like the solutions around matic um and the entire landscape i do want to talk about this monolithic versus modular framework and understanding this will give you a better understanding of why polygons ag layer um, is very very important so monolithic structures um, such as solana uh, just you know it's just one chain that does it all so execution settlement consensus data availability all does it all on one chain um, of course the trade-off here is decentralization um, and potentially security um, and ethereum is going for the modular approach where um, ETH mainnet um, is technically monolithic where it can do execution settlement and data availability. Um, the problem is it's way too slow. Um, and I'm sure, you know, no one really enjoys using ETH mainnet. Um, and the ETH scaling roadmap says, let's use ETH as a settlement layer and then let's have all the execution, right? Let's have all the users go to these L2s and then let's have, you know, ETH uh, for consensus and data availability. Uh, Eigenlayer with EigenD8 is gonna try to take over the data avail avail availability aspect, um, but that's kind of the roadmap here. Uh, execution, L2s, settlement, Ethereum, data availability, right now ETH, but also soon EigenD8, potentially in Q2 or Q3 of this year. Um, I am very bullish Eigenlayer. Um, I think it's gonna be a really big launch. 
And the entire monolithic versus modular approach says that the monolithic says, yeah, like, you know, this one big square that does it all. And then the modular approach says, why don't we just plug and play, right? Instead of just relying on one chain to, that does it all, you know, like, why don't we use Celestia for data availability? Because Celestia specializes in that, um, or Avail, or EigenDA. Why don't we use Ethereum for settlement, or se Dimension for settlement? And why don't we just allow developers to choose any, um, as, I, I suppose, like, software development kit, whether it be Polygon CDK, Dimensions RDK, um, or like whatever existing already, uh, like SDKs um, already out there, why don't we just allow devs to pick and choose which, uh, I guess, systems uh, they want to plug in. Um, and I think this is like the narrative that's percolating around where execution, we have app chains and rollups, uh, settlement, we can use Dimension or Ethereum, and then data availability, uh, Celestia, EigenDA, or Avail, which I'll also talk about later in the video. Um, and for this reason, I am pretty bullish Dimension. I've been talking about Dimension for quite some time. Um, and I do want to talk about, I guess, the value accrual because people talk about you know, governance tokens, um, L1 tokens, you know, they're all just narratives, all, all just memes. Um, and, you know, in some way it is true. Um, but if, you know, we can build a composability layer um, that can connect various L2s and various app chains, there does, I mean, there's a direct value accrual um, for things like Dimension. And I, I, look, look, this is not a Dimension video, uh, but the idea um, is that Dimension introduces the role of development kit, RDK, which makes it really easy to deploy roll apps. Um, and because Dimension is built on the Cosmos SDK, all these roll apps are composable with one another, which in theory attracts more roll apps. Um, because if my app can talk to your app, then we can both benefit. Um, and as a result, the number of roll apps increase um, and you know more value flows to Dimension because it's a settlement layer, it's where all the, um, I guess, like the liquidity is stored. Um, and as there's more liquidity, the security of roll apps increase um, because the value of Dimension goes up and then the uh, Dimension ecosystem flourishes and then Dime is thought of as modular money. Um, is there anything built on Dimension right now? Not really, not to my knowledge, uh, but this is the idea. And that concept, right, just keep that concept in mind, that also applies to what Polygon is building with their 2.0 um, and their rebrand from, I guess, the Matic token to the POL token, and then this Ag layer, which is what I'm personally very, very bullish on. Um, because if I'm personally bullish Dimension, which is basically this IBC settlement layer that connects different app chains, then I have to be bullish, right, or I'll be hypocrite, or I'll be a hypocrite if I wasn't bullish an aggregate layer that can connect all these L2s that can potentially fix the liquidity fragmentation problem. So, you know, we talked about the monolithic structure, we talked about the modular structure, and then Polygon is saying, no, you know what, let's create our own category. We are the aggregated layer. Um, only in crypto, right, can devs just build um, their own words and like the sectors. Uh, but let's kind of talk about what this aggregation actually is. Um, so like I mentioned, um, right now, all the L2s have this fragmented liquidity problem um, where yes, there are bridges, but it's too fast, sorry, it's too slow and too ex too expensive um, to create cross-chain applications. Um, and the reason this fragmented liquidity problem exists is because you know all these chains, all these separate chains um, settle on Ethereum um, and it takes, you know, it's very, very expensive. Um, and yeah, that's part of the problem. They have to post their proofs individually to the L2. So, the idea is instead of L2s settling individually on each one by one, why don't we, right? Or I mean, not we, right? But like, why, do, like, why don't someone, uh, why doesn't someone create, let's say an aggregation layer, which is what Polygon is doing, where, yeah, like in instead of L2s settling individually on ETH, why don't these L2s settle on the same aggregation layer and the ag layer can settle on Ethereum, right? Just post one proof to Ethereum. Um, so instead of all these L2s posting proofs individually, um, they post this proof to ag layer and then ag, ag layer aggregates those proofs into one. Um, and as a result, all these L2s can have this idea of unified liquidity. Uh, so, you know, in Problem one is you know this right uh, liquidity fragmentation, and then Polygon says, okay, we are going to build this aggregation layer, um, which instead of having different bridge contracts, we'll have a unified bridge contract, and as a result, um, because all these various L2s share the same aggregation layer, uh, we can actually create crossing applications. And if you go into the, docu the documentation, uh, they mentioned that one of the use cases is uh, with the ag layer, a user on let's say like whatever chain, uh, chain one, holding DAI can buy an NFT on Polygon ZK EVM or Immutable X. Uh, basically, you know, you can just take one token and just buy something else on a different 
on, on, on a different chain without having to bridge. Um, yeah, without having to bridge funds there. So from the end user's perspective, it'll feel like using a single chain because with Ag Layer, you know, it's obfuscating all that, you know, the backend stuff. Um, and then from a user perspective, you don't have to really worry about that. Um, and this is by definition account abstraction. Of course, um, I'm not really sure when this is gonna get rolling. Um, it's only in theory um, because the ag layer is not out yet. It's going live on the 23rd to my knowledge. Um, but you know, the end game of, I guess, L2s probably looks like what Polygon is building um, because you know, Arbitrum is cool, Optimism is cool, Blast is cool, um, but you know, like, are we really gonna have hundreds and thousands of rollups um, in the coming years that just live in its own silo um, that can't really communicate. I mean, that doesn't really make any sense. Um, I think the end game looks more like something's like, you know, what Aglayer and like Polygon's building uh, where, yeah, like let's just settle um, individually on the Aglayer and then the Aglayer can handle uh, the, the proof posting um, on mainnet. Um, and as a result, um, we have this unified liquidity structure. Um, so I've been listening to some podcasts and one other team member said that, I mean, Aglayer is going to get going in the next couple of days, um, but the full implementation of this account abstraction might happen late Q4. Um, and, you know, if you know crypto devs, whenever they say Q4, they mean Q2 of next year. Um, so this is more of like a longer term thesis, I suppose. Um, but, you know, I, I do believe that Aglayer is an interesting implementation also because, you know, Polygon already has like all these teams building on top of it. Um, and, you know, they already have an ecosystem. I mean, I, mean, I am bullish things like Dimension, uh, but there's like no apps on Dimension. Um, but at least, you know, these teams have been building on top of, you know, uh, the Polygon ZK EVM um, and the Polygon C CDK. Uh, so in theory, um, let's say you're on Manta uh, Pacific, just holding USDC and Ether, and you want to buy something on Immutable, the NFT. Um, right now, you have to just bridge from Manta to Immutable, wait a couple minutes, um, pay some fees, and then you know, I guess like buy whatever. Um, but with the Ag layer, uh, you can just do it in one transaction, and it'll take let's say around five to ten seconds, um, or you know maybe up to five minutes. Um, but that's kind of the end goal here. Um, and Polygon only gets a lot of flack for, I guess, spending all this money on these partnerships like Nike, Starbucks. Uh, Instagram, I mean, like Disney, like, you know, there's, there's like a bunch of these partnerships um, that really haven't amounted to anything. Um, but you can argue that if, you know, the ag layer can build a network effect, um, you know, maybe these teams end up, you know, using the Polygon CDK, the chain development kit, um, to build their own L2. Um, because, you know, the end game is that, you know, it's going to be really easy for anyone to spin up their own L2. Um, and, you know, as there's more network effects, there's also more value that accrues to the ag layer um, because you know POL is going to be the token that secures the ag layer. Uh, so let's talk about the rebrand um, and how uh, the POL token ties into all of this. So, you know, Matic, I believe, is like roughly 90% of the of the total supply is circulating, and then the total supply is Temblane. Uh, so it's going to be a one-to-one -one split um, with the same total supply. So there's not going to be any, I guess, issues there. Um, I believe there are going to introduce some inflation, some POL inflation, where the total supply can exceed $10 billion. Um, and that's to incentivize stakers and to, to you know build um, the treasury. So maybe that's somewhat kind of bearish. Um, but also, you know, if you look at the actual tokenomics here, um, a lot of the other chains, like VC chains, you know, maybe like 30% of their supply is circulating, um, but at least with Polygon, uh, they've been around for so long that most of the tokens have already vested. Um, this is a problem too, because uh, they have less, I guess, money in the treasury. Um, and perhaps that's why they're trying to, I guess, introduce some inflation. Um, but you know, that's something to at least consider. So I showed a slide at the beginning of the video. Let's talk about this. So POL um, is going to be the one token to power all Polygon chains. So in the past, um, in the po yeah, so actually, I'll, let me just talk about this graphic here. Um, so the staking layer is also basically the ag layer, and then POL is going to be the token that secures this aggregation layer. Um, and with Matic, the current token, uh, Matic only secures the Polygon proof of stake chain. Okay, like you can stake Matic and secure this chain. Um, but in the future, um, whenever PO, like this thing goes live, POL will secure the ag layer, which can secure um, all these other chains that Polygon. I'm um, sorry, that all these other chains um, that will tap into the aggregation layer. So Polygon POS, Polygon ZK EVM, that's Immutable X, um, Manta Network, um, they're all gonna derive security from the ag layer, um, from POL. That's kind of the idea. Um, so you know, right now, Matic can only be staked to secure the POS chain, the Polygon POS chain, 
But with the rebrand, Polygon is going to secure the ag layer, which will secure multiple chains all at once. And from a value from, from a value uh, accrual perspective, um, POL stakers will receive protocol rewards, transaction fees, and additional rewards. So uh, I guess the rewards are, is going to be paid inflation, transaction fees. Um, I guess it's kind of like Ethereum burn, um, except you know maybe it's not going to be fully profitable. And then additional rewards. To attract more validators, some Polygon chains can choose to introduce. Um, so basically, if you stake POL, you can receive POL uh, staking rewards and also um, new, new tokens that launch um, that use the Polygon CDK and the Ag layer. That's kind of the idea. Uh, and the Polygon CDK um, is you know, some standard SDK. Uh, the Polygon chain development kit allows anyone to build your own ZK Power Delta 2 custom fitted to your needs. So definitely the trend seems to be that. Yeah, like the, I, I mean, I guess a couple of years ago, um, the, start, the startup costs and the friction to deploy your own L2 was very high. Um, but now, right, as the tech um, and the infra gets better, um, the friction and the startup costs become lower and lower, uh, where anyone will be able to you know, spin up their own L2, similar to how right now anyone can spin up their own ERC20 or NFT project. That's kind of the idea. And I talked about this graphic before, where Dimension as a settlement layer um, derives value um, as more and more chains uh, build on top of Dimension and use the Dime as the, the settlement layer. Um, and I took the liberty to just rebrand it um, to this. Um, so same thing, right? Um, but applying it to Polygon where, yeah, the Polygon CDK makes it easier to deploy L2s and the composability of these L2s using the Ag layer will in theory attract more L2s. And, I mean, these teams are already building, such as Immutable X. Um, and because of the composability and you know attracting more developers, we should see more L2s on Ag Layer um, just launch and increase. Um, because why would you spin up your own general purpose L2 when you can just tap into the Ag Layer um, and have your own ZK roll up? Um, and as a result, more value flows to POL because POL um, is securing the Ag Layer um, due to economic security. And then as a result, the Polygon CDK ecosystem flourishes. Uh, so these are, this is like the Ag Layer network effects that lead to POL becoming um, ZK money. Uh, okay, that might not be a good meme. I literally made up, uh, made this up like uh, like 10 minutes ago. Um, but that's kind of the idea. Um, and like I mentioned, if I'm bullish dimension, I would be a hypocrite to not be bullish POL. Uh, I'm generally bullish any solutions that fix this fragmented, fra fragmented liquidity issue um, that haunts any app chain uh, where if you're building an app on Ethereum, you can't really tap into the liquidity on Solana. Um, and I think the end game of blockchains is account abstraction where um, you know people will say, oh, like at some point you don't have to know um, what chain you're on because you know like that'll all be obfuscated from the user. Um, and sure, I mean, that's fine, fine and dandy, but who's actually building it? Um, Dimension is one um, where they're trying to connect via IBC app chains. And then Polygon says, okay, like we're gonna do something similar, except we're gonna connect these ZKL2s. And Polygon, you can argue, is you know really out there. I mean, not maybe not out there, but like really like, um, forward looking, I guess, when it comes to um, investing into ZK technology. Um, and you know, people try to focus their attention on like the bad things Polygon has done, such as I guess like funding D gods and whatnot, um, and having them leave straight away. Um, but you know they do have a pretty stacked treasury. They do have a pretty strong team. They have been around for quite some time, um, and you know I guess they are Ethereum aligned, and they've done everything um, that they said they'll do. Uh, so you know I am bullish, like pretty bullish on the team, um, and you know the, the chain itself is decent as well. Um, so yeah, you know, infinite scalability, um, ecosystem security, um, because um, all these ZKL2s can just share the same security layer, um, and you know, because of the, the Adler technology, um, it enables the, the validator pool, the POL stakers, to scale um, like sub, like thousands and I guess infinite. I mean, not infinite, but like thousands, hundreds, and thousands of polygon chains uh, without sacrificing security, shared security, as they call it. Um, that's the idea, and you know. Okay, so this is kind of, you know, take, you know I, I, I've, I've been talking about this fundamental approach on why I think the ag layer um, is, like, you know, pretty interesting. Um, but I do want to flip the narrative on its head because when we are, I mean, if you're watching this video, you're considering, right, or at least you're interested in the MATIC token or the POL token. Um, and, you know, you don't care about the tech, right? You just, I mean, most people just care about number go up technology. Um, so let me pitch you on why I think Polygon, um, on top of, I guess, the economic benefits from the ag layer, um, can potentially tap into the number go up technology narrative. Um, and 
the, the best narrative right now is you know the airdrop narrative um i'm definitely a fan of these airdrops i'm farming a bunch of airdrops um so when it comes to these airdrops you know nothing is confirmed right? like we're, we're all just staking tokens and hoping that we get some tokens uh so i will be making a lot of assumptions lots of speculation nothing is confirmed i am just going off of you know public knowledge here um but let's get right into it so um yeah, yeah okay yeah so i am a fan of, of the airdrop narrative and i think um in this era um, where there's still regulatory fears in the us at least um, it's very difficult for teams to i guess you know do direct value accrual in the form of revenue share um, because you know if you allow your token to be staked and you know um, you're making money in the form of a dividend from whatever money the protocol is making then that could make that token a security um, of course i think the end game of all crypto tokens is that they eventually become securities uh, maybe that's a controversial take uh, but one way that teams are i guess getting around this approach is by the staking like airdrop narrative where you know you can stake celestia and you can receive more airdrops and those airdrops count as indirect yield. Um, and, you know, I've kind of joked around. I mean, maybe that's it's not really a joke ring, but, um, you know, I've talked about how I think Celestia is the new 3.3 because, you know, as people expect more airdrops, people will stake the token, buy the token. Um, and there's not that much like willingness to sell the token because, I mean, if you can stake this token to receive more money later down the line, why would you ever sell? Um, and that's kind of the point that I was getting to where I think, you know, these staking for airdrop tokens uh, can appreciate a lot and create a bubble. Um, and, you know, these tokens can get to, let's say, um, unreasonable valuations. Uh, so that's, you know, that's the airdrop narrative here. Um, and a lot of people complain about airdrops and like airdrop farmers and whatnot. Um, but if you think about it, airdrops are the primary way teams are launching tokens because uh, the other alternative is we have um, like other tokens where they, you know, release 2% of the circulating supply um, at the token launch and there's like 98% is going to the team and then over the, the next 5 to 10 years, you know, those tokens unlock. And sure, you know, in the short term, those tokens can pump, but from like an ethical perspective, like, you know, like th does that really make sense? You're just enriching the team as long as they um, are, uh, as long as they're around for the next couple of years. Um, and with airdrops, um, all these airdrops is a way to distribute tokens and get the circulating supply, not at 2%, but let's say 10 to 15%. Um, and, you know, you reward the community, um, you reward the people that's been, you know, grinding in the bear market. Um, and, you know, it's also like a more decentralized way, I suppose, of dropping a token um, and like launching it. And then from, a from the team's perspective, uh, you know, like community is happy because they made money and uh, the team gets to start their um, cliff investing schedule. Um, so, you know, fading the airdrop narrative is similar to fading um, or, you know, if you don't believe that airdrops will be lucrative, that's like saying that you don't really expect teams to, to drop tokens in this bull market. I mean, that doesn't really make any sense. In fact, we sh you should expect more tokens to launch in a bull market. Um, and as a result, you should expect more airdrops. So I'm a really big fan of airdrop farming. Um, I think it's a really good way to take a decent amount of capital and turn it into um, a de yeah. I mean, I mean, obviously, you know, everything is a trade. When you buy a token, that's a trade. When you stake a token, you're, that's a trade. Uh, when you choose to hold onto a token and not sell, that's also a trade. Uh, so you know, everything has a risk reward. Um, but I think you know, Polygon and the Matic token is setting up for a pretty asymmetric risk return profile um, because of this potential airdrop narrative. So you know, with stake like staking Celestia, um, you could receive. No, airdrops of projects that use Celestia for data availability. For example, you know, I, I staked Celestia and I got the Diamond airdrop. It was worth six figures, and I'm staking my Diamond airdrop in hopes to get even more airdrops. Uh, so, you know, definitely some three-three behavior going there. Um, and then with Pool, um, because Pool is going to launch this aggregation layer, which is going to secure all these zk rollups. Um, and if the Polygon CDK um, is something that devs end up using and building on top of. Uh, which is already happening with Immutable X and whatnot, uh, then if, you know, new chains want to tap into um, the ad layer, you can potentially expect airdrops to POL stakers, which is something that people aren't really thinking about. Um, and whenever people aren't thinking about something, then, you know, that's kind of what I want to um, at least think about or at least consider. And uh, so, you know, Andy here um, mentioned that Avail, which is... Um, a data availability project um, that's you know been in the works for a couple of years. Uh, he found out, or you know, he pointed out that on ETH Denver, so February twenty sixth, uh, there's like this avail announcement, and he's you know speculating that like maybe they're going to launch mainnet, and then maybe Dime Stakers, 
um, we'll get some air, some of these airdrops. In, in response, the avail project, like the Twitter handle, says "Oops, busted," and then it's like this raccoon, right? It's like, oh, like you know, you caught me. Uh, it was kind of like that GIF or that GIF. So, you know, like maybe you know, dime stakers will receive it, uh, but at least um, this is like their way of saying yeah, that yeah, like we're gonna launch mainnet on the twenty sixth. And to be honest, I'll be I'll be honest with you, like. Like I'm not sure if it makes sense for a veil to airdrop to Dime Stakers. Um, the only reason people are speculating is because you know on Dimension Testnet, um, there are all these app like app chains um, that people have deployed, and they're posting some of their data to Avail um, and some of their data to like Celestia. So because Avail or the Dimension is can potentially be a partner that builds on top of Avail, maybe Avail wants to reward Dime Stakers. Um, that I mean at least that's the idea. Um, I mean, if you want to speculate on this, you know, make sure to stake with HFA. Um, that's my research company. Uh, we're number 36 on the active, active set where, you know, you can stake with us, receive like a 20% APR um, and potentially receive airdrops. But I digress. Um, honestly, I'd be ecstatic, right? <laughs> I'll be so happy if, you know, they airdrop to, you know, dime stakers. Um, and I'm sure, you know, everyone watching this video will also be ecstatic if you, you know, got the dime airdrop or, you know, you, you staked it. But I also think that it's much more reasonable um, to expect them to airdrop to Maddox stakers. Why? Well, you know, Polygon, um, I mean, Avail literally spun off of Polygon, where uh, the co-founder of Polygon, Anurag, um, he, d he left Polygon and acquired Avail, and now uh, he's the CEO of Avail. So basically, a Polygon co-founder left Polygon to be the founder of Avail. Um, so, like, I mean, if they're gonna airdrop to Dime stakers, like, surely they should airdrop to Polygon stakers. Um, I mean, right? I mean, it's literally the same team. Uh, so maybe they airdrop to both, um, but let's say, you know, they allocate 6% of the supply to airdrops. Maybe they airdrop like 4% to Maddox stakers, 1% to Dime stakers, 1% to Ethereum L2 users, or so, I mean, something along those lines. Um, I mean, I'm not saying that the Dime airdrop can't happen, uh, but maybe the airdrop will be weighed heavier um, towards Polygon stakers. Uh, like I said, like this is all speculation, um, but like I mentioned, Avail mainnet on the 26th, um, it seems pretty much confirmed. East Denver launching, or I meaning starting on the 23rd of February, and then Polygon's ag layer. Um, I mean, they call it aggregation day. Um, I mean, they're, they're, this, this ag day is you know going live February 23rd. Uh, so it seems like there's a lot of stars aligned, right? Um, where, yeah, I mean, Polygon's gonna just do this ag day on the 23rd, um, then, like my, a mainnet for Avail is gonna launch on the 26th. East Denver seems like a good place to, you know, announce airdrops. Uh, so, you know, lots of speculation, lots of, you know, um, I'm, I'm like, I'm like squinting some eyes here and like, you know, just throwing a lot of hopium uh, down your ears and like also like my, myself too, right? Uh, uh, just pure hopium here. Uh, but it, it seems reasonable um, where, yeah, I mean, dime stakers might receive the available airdrop. Um, but I mean, like, if they're going to do that, then they're definitely going to airdrop to polygon stakers. Why not? Um, you know, Celestia is trading at, let's say, a $20 billion FTV, then I think it's reasonable to ex expect Avail to trade at least $10 billion FTV. Uh, I, I know these valuations are pretty ridiculous, um, but, you know, that's the meta. You, you know, even Starkware, um, Starknet, um, you know, they're launching, I mean, their token's worth like $18 billion FTV right now, and they have no ecosystem. Uh, so you know, part of the reason why these tokens are launching so high is because, you know, only, let's say, 10% of the circulating supply, 10% of the total supply, is circulating at launch. Um, so the circulating market cap is 10% of the FTV. Um, so, you know, people people only really care about the circulating market cap um, and the FTV becomes more relevant like a year from now. Uh, but, you know, it's still something to consider. And if you're airdrop farming, you know, you wanna be farming things that's gonna be worth $10 million over things that's gonna be worth $10 million. Uh, so, you know, that's at least something to consider. So let's talk about the trade um, and how to potentially uh, receive this airdrop. Um, I will say that um, I might be late. <laughs> you know, yeah, we, we all might be late. You know, um, There's a chance that uh, a snapshot was taken, let's say, last year. That, 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 that's always possible. Um, there's a chance that you know, we missed airdrop um, criteria. Um, Availed hasn't, I mean, they, they never really posted like a snapshot teasing like post on Twitter. Uh, so maybe they haven't taken a snapshot. Um, so um, I do want to just talk about the trade. Um, and it's not about, you know, whether Stakeymatic will definitely get you this airdrop. It's more about the expected value of this trade. So let's talk about that. So I believe Stakeymatic has an asymmetric risk return profile. 
at $9 billion circulating market cap, it's not exactly cheap, but what's the downside, right? You earn 5% on Matic. And then if you stake on Mainnet, um, there's a three to four day unbond period. On Celestia and Dimension, sure, there's more upside, it's more hype because it's a new token, but you know the FTB is like higher, it's pretty egregious, inflation's pretty high, um, and then you have to wait 21 days to unbond your, uh, your I guess, Cosmos-based tokens. Um, so because Matic has been around longer, it's more lindy, um, and you know there's only a three to four day uh, unbonding period, the liquidity risk is much lower. And if you stick Matic with a liquid staking derivative provider, such as Stator or Lido, then you don't have to wait for the unbonding period. Um, but you know you can also argue that it's going to be much safer um, to airdrop farm by staking with a validator instead of you know buying or uh, staking uh, like a liquid staking you know or you know staking like an LSD token. So what's the worst case? What's the downside? Yeah, you know, like right, I mean, worst case you're in five percent on Matic. You know, Matic is not a bad token. Um, people don't like the token, um, but max downside, like 10, 15, 20% maybe. Um, sure, I mean, but that, that's the case for any other altcoin that you can buy. It can go down or it can go up. Yeah, I mean, that's how it works. Um, you know, there's risk. What's the best case? Well, you know, Matic is currently viewed as a cursed coin um, that only secures the Polygon proof of stake chain. Um, but with the ag layer launching, um, and you know the POL rebrand, um, where POL secures the ag layer, um, and if we can expect more chains, uh, more devs to build on top of the ag layer, uh, there can be some airdrops, right? So th that's the airdrop narrative. Like all it takes is one airdrop to just kickstart, you know, to hyper, you know, start um, whatever narrative. Um, and also, you know, Matic is technically in L2, so uh, it could be part of the basket um, that gets built a bit up with the EIP4844 narrative, like the proto-dink sharding, um, that's gonna go live March 13th, where um, it's gonna be cheaper um, to post data on ETH or settle on ETH, uh, and you know L2 users can receive, let's say, a three to 10x decrease in gas costs, uh, which is pretty substantial, um, but I guess, you know, the reason I'm not that bullish EIP4844 uh, is that it's only a marginal improvement and we have other chains like Manta Network posting data on Celestia and they're receiving a 100x uh, gas decrease. Whereas you know EIP4844, I think the max you can uh, expect is like 10x. Um, I think it's more reasonable to expect, let's say three to six x um, gas reduction costs. Um, and I don't talk about risk return because I think one thing that like whenever I talk to you know retail traders um, and you know people that's right, coming back, they just like want to go out the risk curve. Right? You know they, they want to buy something that's you know low market cap that can get to like ten billion market cap, and then you know they you know um, they get like a they get like a, a thousand a thousand x. Um, there's going to be multiple fifty percent drawdowns, but they're not going to be flooded out because they believe you know like the average person just has like this crazy belief that they can just buy something for low and then just ride it all the way high and sell it. I mean, that, that's not really possible. Uh, but I mean, generally, if you just plot all financial markets, uh, you know, typically the more risk you take, the more return uh, that you're supposed to get. But it's not a linear relationship. Uh, we have some high risk things that, go to zero, that goes to zero. We have some low risk things that go to infinity. Um, and a better way to think about it is that yes, like on average, you know, higher risk means higher return. Um, but there's also a standard deviation um, where, yeah, like, you know, something that's low risk can also give you low returns. Something that's low risk can also give you high returns. Something that's high risk can also give you very, very low returns. And I think when you're investing, um, and I guess when you're thinking about portfolio sizing, you wanna, you know, bet bigger on things with not that much downside, but with asymmetric upside. Uh, of course, it's easier said than done. Um, and there's a lot of uncertainty and speculation when I'm talking about talking about these things. But I think, you know, staking Matic is somewhere down here where, you know, of course, you know, buying crypto is risky, um, but on the crypto spectrum, you know, Matic is pretty low risk. Uh, and if the airdrop narrative actually happens um, and, you know, at, and if more chains uh, build on top of the Polygon CDK and use the ag layer, you can argue that, you know, maybe the downside is like like this, right? this small standard deviation, uh, but the upside, the potential up, um, upside return is something like this, I think. Yeah, I have this, right? It's where if you, if you kind of like just look at this one um, and kind of zoom in on the potential Matic trade uh, and you plot the potential returns on the x-axis and the frequency, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's not perfect, right? I'm trying to get this idea across where the upside is pretty up there um, and the downside is fairly limited. Um, and because of this, um, I think it's, if, if you just view this as 
an expected value calculation um, where you can stake Matic, which has a limited downside, or which is an asset with limited downside in my opinion. Um, and you can argue that from a USD perspective, it might have some limited upside, but if you view staking Matic in the POL token to receive a 5% APY and also future airdrops, and that you, you can kind of think of that as a dividend in perpetuity, um, you know, like what's the downside, what's the upside? Um, and even if there's, let's say, a 10% probability of these airdrops happening, um, I still think that it's a, I mean, I'm not going to say it's a no-brainer, like nothing is financial advice, uh, but I think it's very, very plus EV. Um, the expected value is pretty pretty up there. Um, and I try to find, you know, like whenever I, I guess, I like invest or trade or, um, you know, swing trade or whatever, um, I try to find, you know, these, I guess, plus EV spots. Um, and of course, not all of them end up working, right? Like, in, like when you're investing or trading, it's not about being right all the time. It's about finding spots where you've, identify the downside and then you identify the upside and then you take on that risk. Um, sometimes you take on that risk and you lose money. It happens. Sometimes you take on that risk and you get rewarded, but at least you took on that risk. So you do deserve that reward. You've done the fundamental work. Um, and I've done the fundamental work. Um, and I think that it's something to at least consider. And from a sentiment perspective, you know, if you go on Twitter, you know, everyone is just shitting on Matic. It's like, it's such a bad chain. No one uses it. Um, they're spending millions of dollars on partnerships that no one cares about, yada, yada, yada. Um, but I had Chow on, on my channel, um, on the Crypto Market Wizards podcast. And he mentioned that, you know, I mean, he runs like a VC fund, like, like a incubator. And, you know, he gets to, you know, see all the applications that, uh, you know, people submit. And, Polygon is consistently the second largest developer ecosystem after ETH mainnet, according to you know their alliance style data, like his company, and also electric capital data. Um, there's also this narrative around Polygon is running out of money, um, but in the podcast with Chow um, and Polygon, uh, Sandeep mentioned that they have a billion dollars in the treasury. So they, I mean, they always have money. Um, you know, they have a billion dollars in TVL. Uh, Honestly, I don't, I, don't remember, I don't really remember the last time I used Polygon DeFi, um, but, you know, I mean, there's a lot of capital there, um, and, you know, I think everyone has a soft spot for Polygon, especially if you're watching my channel. Um, a number of high-profile L2s built, um, you know, it's a really beefed-up ZK team. Uh, you know, they have these partnerships like Reddit, Nike, Starbucks, which hasn't really translated to, I guess, value accrual, um, but there is, you know, I guess, like, the left tail like white swan event, right? you know, like, you know, potential, uh, yeah, right tail um, white swan event where, yeah, like they can just uh, tap into the ag layer, maybe even build their own chain. How likely is that? Probably not likely in the short term, uh, something to consider. Um, the token rebrand might be bullish because Matic has, like the Matic chart doesn't look that great. Um, so maybe, you know, having a new ticker, um, I'm, I'm not sure if poll is a good ticker, um, but I mean, it, it is what it is, uh, but there is gonna be more utility um, for POL than Matic. Um, so, you know, if Matic's worth 9 billion, then like, why can't poll be worth more? If there's gonna be additional, uh, I guess, utility on top of, you know, because poll is what Matic is and more. So technically, um, I mean, technically in efficient markets, it should be priced in, but obviously crypto, people don't really pay attention. So things don't really get priced in. Um, you know, I mean, I, I love Ansem, right? I, I love Z. You know, he was on my channel. I interviewed him. Um, but I think he's also kind of leading this anti-Polygon narrative, which I think is quite a little bit unjustified, um, but, you know, to each their own. And, you know, I guess with crypto, the social media is the fundamentals and the social media is the narrative because what you read on Twitter, people just take it as truth, um, which is like a really dangerous thing to do. Um, but, you know, whenever uh, there's a disconnect between reality um, and the underlying uh, underlying fundamentals um, and like the narrative and whatnot. Um, I'm I, I'm I'm interested, you know. Like I'm interested uh, if if an asset is underowned, and the narrative shifts. By definition, more people have to buy it if they want to buy into this narrative. Um, so, you know, it seems like the fundamentals are improving. No one really likes Matic. It's underowned, and then there's this asymmetric uh, opportunity with staking, uh, which has convex upside returns. Um, where if it works, it's going to work really well, um, and if it doesn't work, then you literally just Botmatic and you're earning 5% APY on it. You know, it's it's pretty good in my opinion. Um, and yeah, I talked about the Denkun upgrade earlier. Um, you know, and ZK, sorry, uh, Polygon is one of the, I guess, top ZK, like zero knowledge teams out there. Um, and, you know, their FTV is like roughly 9 to 10 billion. Um, even StarkNet, right, the token that's just airdropped, is trading at $18 billion FTV. 
which seems pretty insane. Uh, and you know, like what's the upside? Honestly, I'm not quite sure because uh, in a bull market, things can get crazy. Um, but you know, I'll at least you know, position myself for the narrative. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. You know, I'll take it on the chin. You know, I've I don't delete my videos. You can go through my my channel and you can just pinpoint all the times I was wrong. But you can also pinpoint the times where you know I was right. Um, and at the end of the day, I'm just posting my ideas out there. I'm doing the work. Um, I, I don't make any money from like I, I don't run ads on this YouTube channel. Um, so you know, like I'm just trying to share my research um, and letting you decide um, because I think we're all adults here. Um, so yeah, let's talk about the stakematic. So um, unfortunately, the way to natively stakematic is on ETH mainnet, um, which is counterintuitive, but I mean that's how it is. Uh, and you know, I mean, I'll link it in the description below. And I think at current gas costs, it's gonna cost around, I believe, five-ish dollars to approve Matic uh, in this contract, and then roughly fifteen dollars to stake. Uh, so let's say you know, fifth, uh, yeah, depending on the gas cost, let's say fifteen to fifty dollars, um, you know, to stake Matic um, for like each individual wallet, which is not perfect, um, but. You know, the alternative is you can stake with Polygon, like, or sorry, you can stake with Lido. Um, so with Lido, um, you also have to stake on mainnet, but, but you can potentially buy staked Matic on the Polygon chain. Um, but, you know, like, is, it that, is that gonna count as, you know, airdrop eligibility criteria? I'm not quite sure. Um, there is also this other alternative called Stater. Um, and on Stater, you can stake Matic on Stater on Polygon. And then I think whenever these staking limits are filled, um, they take all that Matic and then they bridge it back to mainnet and then they stake. Uh, so that's kind of how it works. But honestly, if, if you're airdrop farming, um, I think the safest way to do this is just staking via mainnet with a validator. Uh, we've had instances such as with you know Tia, like Celestia, uh, staked Tia and Milk Tia um, were eligible for airdrops, um, but you know, there's, I mean, honestly, there's like no way to know. Um, and this is the reason people don't like airdrop farming because there's uncertainty. People do not like uncertainty. Uh, so, you know, whenever there's uncertainty, uh, people tend to just not do anything um, because there's cognitive dissonance and they don't want to like, you know, go through all this and not be rewarded. Um, but I say that there's a lot of alpha and that in just like doing things. Um, and, you know, that's something to at least consider. So. I'm personally gonna just you know hold Matic X and whatnot, uh, but you know honestly, I, I actually I should probably stake Matic on mainnet. Um, I'll, I'll I'll probably do that. I'll probably have to do that actually. As you can see, I'm doing this. Uh, I'm researching in real time here, right? I'm I, I, so sometimes because sometimes I I write articles, I make videos. Um, or I, I make these slides, which take a long time. And then, you know, in my head, it's like, okay, like this makes sense. And then I talk through it and I don't even know how long this video is, but I, I thought I, I talked through something and I'm like, actually, it's probably worth doing something like something like that. Right. Um, you can also, you know, use Matic X and stake Matic as collateral, um, on Aave. So, you know, you can also, I mean, there's already like DeFi utility and whatnot. Um, so, I mean, for that reason, I, I you know, I mean, you, you can even borrow Matic, right. And then like stake and whatnot. So, um, like when I talk about staking Matic, it's like there's a lot of uncertainty. Um, like, does it really like does it really make sense staking Matic like a couple days before mainnet, a couple days before Ag Day? Um, I'm quite not sure. Um, but you know, there's a confluence of factors here where there's a fundamental improvement in the Matic token with the PL rebrand um, and you know airdrop narrative potentially. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you. Um, for me, I am staking Matic across some wallets, um, mainly. Stater, but like I mentioned, I'll probably, you know, just a few wallets on um, on mainnet. Um, I'm gonna stake, it, when I, if and when I do uh, Matic staking on mainnet, I will choose a non top 10 validator um, that charge a 5% commission. Um, and I might get an airdrop, I might not. If I don't get an airdrop, am I gonna complain? No. If I get an airdrop, am I gonna celebrate? Yes. Um, and the same should apply to you. Um, if you stake and you receive an airdrop, you're gonna be rewarded because you did something that a lot of people don't wanna do. You know, you're buying Matic, a cursed coin that no one likes. Um, and you know, like maybe that's a case that you know people should do it. Um, if you wanna 
learn what I'm doing exactly, uh, make sure to check out um, our premium research. Um, I share everything in there. Um, and you know, I also talk about other things on like airdrop farming, such as Celestia that I mentioned. Um, you know, my like myself, my team, we've all received six figure airdrops this cycle. Um, and you know, it's 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 been pretty it's been pretty good. Uh, yeah. So for fundamental analysis and airdrop farming strategies, please consider HOA Premium. You have over 600 humble performers. Um, it's a it's probably like the biggest exclusive community in DeFi, to be honest. Um, so you know, make sure to check it out. If not, that's fine. Uh, but hopefully, um, you got some, I guess, um, some benefits or yeah, like you, you got something out of this video. Um, this video is 45 minutes long. Okay, so um, very long video. So I guess um, if you watch till the end, then at least, you know, here's a cookie. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. See you guys next week or whenever. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed um, and have fun staking and farming out there. Bye-bye.